So like I said, uh, Sharon put out the email and I responded with um, why is why are they putting the message out that we can't afford it when we obviously have been collecting this on a utility bill, not only through the rate structure which they changed, but also through the reliability charge on your bill. And there's a picture of it. So some people pay ten dollars, it depends upon your meter. Um, some businesses pay in excess of a thousand dollars a month. So if you're a heavy user, um, it's like I said, it's a bad rate. Um, it was designed to build that that fee was designed or charge. Let me correct myself. That charge was actually designed, and you can see it's on the second slide to uh, support fixed replacement costs for expiring power contracts for local power plants and um, the transmission line. Now, I've also attached the resolution for you, two resolutions, and actually the council agenda because I'm a teacher and you know you have to back up what you put out there. And um, so you can see um, in the resolution there was, or in the agenda there was, the cost was at the time um, 185 million and Southern California Edison was supposed to pick up about 50 million of that. So our cost basically would have been 135 million. Now remember, we've been collecting this fee or this charge since 2008, approximately 26 million dollars a year. What I can tell you is that um, the monies are put in a designated fund, not a restricted, restricted fund, and that it is subject to a general fund transfer. So at 11.5%, you can do the math. Um, I actually, um, if you turn the second page, there's all the fees that they've developed, and then there's a copy. This was a small business owner's utility bill. So if you, your utility charge, you see it's $10 and $20, $30, like I said, it goes up. Um, we've been collecting, like I said, $26 million a year. Um, so. Really, what happened was, if you look at the second, there's a letter behind the PowerPoint slides, and that's the second letter. So within a week after presenting to the RRR group, the first letter came down saying that we could not afford it, and a new message went up. And that's a copy of the second letter, and the second letter says it's an emergency. So since 1960s, it's been an emergency. Um, what you have to also understand, and this is where I am not an expert, with Kaiso, we are not going to have all of um, the burden put upon Riverside ratepayers, although we are the only ones who benefit from it. And um, it actually affects Eastvale, Norco, Garuba Valley, um, besides the area of Ward 7. I live right around the corner from here, and so I won't see this by Jason, but it affects those communities. Um, it's uh, like Chino Hills, it's spread out. I think everything from 14 cents to 25 cents, is that a month or a year? Um, basically, it's spread out to everyone within the state of California. We all pay for it, just like we are all paying for Chino. So it's very, very small um, amount of money. Um, my thing is, is you know, we need to be better together, better neighbors, but that just doesn't include Riverside. Um, we're the city of arts and innovation. Like Jason said, there's a lot of other alternatives. Um, but we need to be better neighbors to everyone around us, all the cities around us. And my question is, is why aren't we? In today's economy, everything, we need to be better neighbors, and this impact center zone. So you can see the fire threat zone. I mean, I don't want that for my neighbors. It is gonna impact it if there is a huge fire because, you know, our, we will be affected by it. So um, there's a lot to this, there's ongoing, there's just a, a hearing on Tuesday. Um, it is ongoing, there's a great resource. It's, is it still part of the Valley? Yeah, the um, 
Kalupa Valley against power line abuse. Kalupa Valley against power line abuse. He has a Facebook page. Um, Rick Bonder, that to me is the best information, but it is complicated, but I urge you, um, as elected officials, as community members, you re this is really important. And it's going to be really important for Riverside, Riverside's future, and the surrounding cities. Um, you know, we even threatened to cut off their water in Norco, our former public utilities director. They didn't play the game. I mean, and, and so Riverside is, you know, we, we tend to bully people because we're larger. But if you have concerns, I also, um, or more information, is contact the council members and the mayor of those cities. They've been going through this. They have a whole different perspective. And they can tell you not only the financial impact, but the environmental impact of what it's going to do to their communities. We're not sending that message here in the city of Riverside. It's we can't afford it, and it's an emergency. Well, it's not to those folks. And um, you know, we really need to be better, better neighbors, better people. Just um, like you said, better together, and um, I'm sure that we do the right thing, that it's going to come back to us in the future. But right now, this is not good to play. It's just not good. It makes us look really, really bad. So, if you have any questions about this, if anyone's welcome to call me. Like I said, I only know about the reliability fee, but the financial structure of all of this is much, much more complicated. And I have two grandchildren, and they kind of take my care <laughs> So, thank you.